Good morning, grandchildren. Today is Monday, September 28th, 2015. Uh, it is 105 in the morning right now, and uh, I got off work a few hours ago, and then I remembered that I needed to make today's video, so here I am. In addition to all of the other things that prevent me from going to sleep, you guys are, are one of them now, so thanks a lot. There's this thing about people that really frustrates me, and I wanted to talk to you guys about it. People have a habit of not confirming information when it's presented to them, and that's really frustrating. That's the entire reason that ridiculous urban legends exist, like you eat eight spiders every year in your sleep. Th this is probably one of the most famous urban legends of all time that people regularly tell other people is that you eat eight spiders every, every single year while you sleep. And while that's terrifying to think about, it's not true at all. There were approximately zero studies that actually showed that people ate eight spiders a year in their sleep. The movement of your mouth and body while you're sleeping, along with the fact that air is going in and out of your mouth, is going to scare away any spider that's going to get that close to you if it's already crawling on you. It, it probably won't even come near you because it knows that you're a giant thing that could kill it. But there's so many of these misconceptions that people have just because somebody else said it or they read it somewhere and they didn't actually think to try to double check that source to see if it was reliable and I think that that needs to stop, but I don't think there is any way to stop it, so I am just going to complain about it indefinitely, probably. A lot of people say that the Great Wall of China is one of the only man-made things you can see from space, and that's ridiculous, because you can't see the Great Wall of China from space. Obviously, if you have a satellite that zooms in on a picture far enough to the Earth, it can see pretty much anything. If, I'm, if I was standing outside my house while the satellite took the picture, uh, then you could see me from space, I guess. But if you just, like, from a person's perspective, looked down from space at the Earth, you couldn't see the Great Wall of China. Another misconception that a lot of people have that's really frustrating to me because I love movies is that you only use 10% of your brain. And there's so many movies that use this misconception and try to relay it as science to the general public, but the general public doesn't know enough about science or biology to actually know that it's completely ridiculous and they just go along with it because they didn't double check what the movie said. Your brain is divided into all of these little parts that are doing their own thing. You have a specific part of your brain that works your nose and like interprets smell. You have certain part of your brain that processes audio input and it deciphers sound and is constantly working on listening to the things around you even if you're not trying to listen to something just so it can tell you if something's wrong like if someone's screaming and there's a part of your brain that processes your processes your eyes and there's parts of your brain that do like the the main conscious thinking and there's so many different parts of your brain that are always working and even if there was only 10% of all of those combined that were being used in a moment. That would kind of make sense, but the thing that's ridiculous is all these people think that that means that if you could increase that 10% to 100% of your brain being used at any moment in time, you'd be really, really smart, but that's ridiculous. If the entirety of your brain was being used at any given point in time, that would just be electricity floating around and it wouldn't actually be able to process anything. Your brain would become completely useless. A computer processor has to actually send electricity through the processor and, and through like resistors and capacitors and perform operations on that electricity and do math and figure things out. If you filled the entire processor of a computer with electricity, so you're using 100% of your processor now, nothing would happen. You couldn't do math like that because that's not how things work. Apparently, if you are a man, every seven seconds you think about sex. The easiest way to disprove this myth is to be a man and realize that you're not thinking about sex every seven seconds. It's actually 15 seconds, on average. Another one, the Easter Island heads have bodies beneath them buried in the ground. Wait, wait, that one's actually real? Holy sh- I've gotta tell someone! Anyway, what all of this has been building up to, uh, which is the main thing that I've been hearing a lot in the news recently, especially on the uh, conservative talk radio that I've been listening to. Apparently, Planned Parenthood sells the uh, 
unborn fetuses to scientists for money from abortions. That's, that's what they're saying. And everyone's talking about this on the radio. In the presidential race right now, uh, uh, it's actually a big topic, Planned Parenthood, and the Republicans are, uh, in general, trying to defund Planned Parenthood. There was actually a bill that they tried to get passed, uh, I think it was in Congress, that defunded Planned Parenthood for a year while they try to figure out something else to do. Uh, it didn't actually go through, fortunately, which is good because Planned Parenthood does a lot of really, really awesome things and provides a lot of really good services to women who couldn't otherwise have had those services given to them. Not just abortion, that's not all Planned Parenthood does. They, they teach. Planned Parenthood is a beautiful source of information for uh, to people about uh, sexual and reproductive health and a place that they can actually, I think you can get mammograms done there. Uh, just in general, uh, gender specific health and uh, information and knowledge can be received from Planned Parenthood and that's, that's a really cool thing and there's not really that many other organizations that do that on the level that Planned Parenthood does and they're a very important part of the, this country I think. But, but, but right now in general a lot of the especially extremist Republicans are uh, getting very upset about Planned Parenthood selling baby parts to scientists for money and uh, it's kind of ridiculous even to the point that uh, one of the Republican candidates uh, Carly Fiorina I think her name is uh, she was talking about, in, in, during a speech, a video that she saw of a, uh, a, one of the Planned Parenthood doctors cutting open a baby and you could see its heart still beating and stuff. And apparently, that video doesn't exist. No one can find traces of this video existing. No one besides her uh, has seen this video. Uh, really, uh, from what I've gathered. No one can confirm this video, and some people think that it might have been a confusion with another video about something that happened in a traffic accident, and they were trying to perform surgery to save the baby. Regardless of that, she said that, and then people freaked out and went along with it like it was completely accurate because they trusted what she said, and I don't think you should trust people that much. Not even me. I tell people random facts all the time, and you probably shouldn't even trust me because just because I know random interesting facts doesn't mean I got them from an accurate source. I feel like most of the random facts that I know are probably accurate, but I probably made a mistake at least once in one of those like thousand things that I've told people, did you know this? And at least one of them probably was incorrect for some reason, and I'm just a dumb person. So you, sh you shouldn't trust anyone if they say something that doesn't seem real or that seems surprising. You should always try to double check those sources and see what the truth is and I think you learn a lot from that. Apparently in the Planned Parenthood thing, the bottom line is that when you get an abortion, if you get an abortion, uh, you can choose whether you want to donate that fetus's body to science because there's a lot of really useful things that you can get from stem cells that are present in that uh, fetus that you can't get anywhere else and we're doing a lot to solve problems and create medications that are like life-saving from that information but you can only that only happens when the uh, original mother donated that fetus to science there's a lot of laws that say that Planned Parenthood can't actually make a profit from doing that but then if you turn on the radio, you hear that Planned Parenthood is a Nazi organization that takes apart babies and sells them. And it's just like those misconceptions that I was telling you about earlier that n no one actually uh, uh, checks things. They, they just, they hear something and then they repeat it. It's like that game of telephone that you play when you're a little kid where, uh, of course, by the time that you get through those 20 people, it's going to be something completely different and that wouldn't happen the way that it does in everything like politics and the news like it does right now if people actually checked. What I'm trying to say is that when you hear something crazy that doesn't seem believable or just something that somebody says that doesn't necessarily seem like it has to be true, don't just trust them regardless of who they are. Even the most brilliant people on this planet make mistakes and it's very easy to misinterpret information, regardless of who you are. And it doesn't matter who you're listening to, it's always good to fact check, even if that makes you look like an asshole for not believing them. If you're that worried about seeming like an asshole for fact checking somebody, 
if the, if just after you do it, if they're if they were right, give them a high five, and if they were wrong, give them a pity high five, I guess. But then to still tell them that it was wrong, and what the truth is. But give them a high five because that improves most situations. Another thing that I've always kind of hated that's similar uh, in what it is is those weird laws that you hear a lot, or at least I hear them a lot right now at this point in time. You hear just ridiculous stuff like uh, in in Nevada, if you are a man with facial hair, it's illegal to kiss a woman. Or in this place, it's illegal to go to the bathroom if the window is open. Or it's illegal to disrobe in front of a man's portrait. And while it's really fun to, to tell your friends all of these dumb laws that don't make any sense because the government's dumb and why do they do that? And that, you, did you know that it's illegal to, uh, if you're in Iowa, eat potatoes in a bathtub on Sundays? Like 90% of the time, those weird laws that you hear are completely inaccurate. And I, I was looking them up earlier and trying to actually find the, the, the places in the law that said that. I just found a bunch of weird laws and I was looking, trying to trace them back to the original actual context of that law, why it is the way that it is. And the two things that I found were that either A, they were completely made up and that nobody can find the source of where in the law it says that not even I found this blog of a guy who is a lawyer and he used like state of the art law searching utilities to try to find the source of this one law and it just didn't exist. There was the, the, the mustache one that I told you uh, that it's illegal to kiss a woman if you have a mustache if you're a man then uh, he tried to look that up and it doesn't exist. That's not a thing that there's no law that says that in pretty much any state, but everyone, that's a really popular one that people tell all the time and it has no basis in reality whatsoever, but people don't fact check. So they don't know that the law doesn't actually say that. So that's really frustrating that people don't check that before they pass on information. But the other thing that I found out during that whole process is that Trying to fact check stuff like that can actually turn out incredibly interesting. It turns out interesting when you find out that something wasn't made up, that something wasn't incorrect, that this thing was actually true, and then you try to find out why. Why is it that in this one place, I think it was somewhere near Los Angeles, but I don't remember, uh, you're not allowed to wear a zoot suit legally. And that seems ridiculous. It's just a zoot suit. Uh, why can't you dress like someone from the 1930s or whatever? But then when you actually research the law, you get this amazing history lesson about this conflict between these two kind of, uh, these groups of people in the 1930s and how uh, zoot suits were generally made out of a certain fabric that was very expensive. Th these zoot suits that were a representation of the money that you had, that you could afford this material that was really expensive, caused a lot of disruption socially amongst those people there. So this one city decided to ban it to try to, uh, try to put an end to some of the stuff that was going wrong around that time. And reading that, it's crazy, like, wow, that was a real law and it makes sense. It's not as ridiculous as the simple, simple version that people say. It has historical backing to it. Anyway, it's getting kind of late and I still have to edit this video and it's the middle of the night, so I think I'm gonna go. But the bottom line is, regardless of whether it makes you not fun at parties if you constantly correct people, about ridiculous misconceptions, and if you kind of look like a jerk for fact-checking people, it at least kind of combats the issue of people blindly trusting ridiculous information. Well, that's my rant for the day. If you guys see me anytime in the near me future you present, We should argue about something political. Find something that we disagree on. And I'll tell you why I'm right. Yeah. See you guys.